Okay, we're on June 07, page 6, question 32. Which quantity of excess electric charge could be found on an object? This is kind of a vocabulary question. You need to know that a single elementary charge is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So that's the charge on a, either an electron, or if it's positive, the charge on a proton. And you can't have a smaller charge than that in electricity. So this would be a fraction of elementary charges. Six and a quarter elementary charges, you can. It's got to be a whole number. 1.6 elementary charges, that's also a fraction. So now you can have 1.6. If you had two electrons, that would be 3.2. If you had three electrons, that would be 4.8. And now we got an answer. This would be a, a fraction of an electric charge. And so the correct answer is 2, the number of elementary charges. It's got to be a whole multiple of 1.6. Question 33. The diagram represents two electrically charged, identically sized metal spheres, A and B. This has a positive charge of 2 times 10 to the negative 7 coulombs. And this also has a positive charge of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 7 coulombs. So this is a stronger positive charge than this one. The spheres are brought into contact. And this is kind of a vocabulary thing again, or a concept thing. When you bring charged objects to touch, the charge is equally distributed between them. Which sphere will have the greatest net gain of electrons? Well, here's a positive 2, positive 1, total charge is positive 3. You touch them together, that total charge is split between them. So each of them would have a positive charge of 1.5 times 10 to the negative 7 coulombs. And uh, this is less positive. In order to become less positive, it has to gain electrons. Electrons have to be added. This is more positive, and so this, in fact, loses some of its electrons. So uh, if the spheres are brought in contact, which sphere will have a net gain of electrons? That looks like sphere A only would have a net gain of electrons. Question 34. Light demonstrates the characteristics of. Well, this is the old, is light a wave or is it a particle? Well, light obviously can diffract, and uh, that uh, is a characteristic of waves. It can interfere, that's also a characteristic of waves. And you can polarize light, that's exclusively a characteristic of waves. However, the photoelectric effect says that when electrons... Uh, are given off when light hits an object. So light hits an object and can eject electrons. And that's a characteristic of a particle. So the correct answer for light is it's both a wave and a particle. It's the particle wave duality would be the vocabulary. Question 35 and the last one in part one. The energy produced by the complete conversion of 2 times 10 to the negative 5 kilograms of mass into energy. So somehow mass, 2 times 10 to the negative 5 kilograms, converts into energy. And this is the famous E equals mc squared equation. And c, of course, is the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So now it's calculator time to find the correct answer. So if you plug in, uh, the mass would be 2 times 10 to the negative 5 kilograms times 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Don't forget you have to square that. Well, that turns into 9 times 10 to the 16 times 2 is going to be uh, 1.8 times 10 to the uh, 12. So it's one of these. So it's terajoules or megajoules. And if you can't remember, on your formula sheet, you've got uh, the prefixes for the powers of 10. And there's tera times 10 to the 12. Mega is only times 10 to the 6. So the correct answer has got to be 1.8 terajoules of energy. E equals mc squared. That's Einstein's famous equation. You're doing it here on your final exam.